Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the SS Ultimate Goku back another video, and today I'm going to do my review on the Attack on Titan episode 33 <coughs> review. Um, so the beginning of this episode was really weird and just didn't make sense at all. Um, so if you remember the last episode, um, uh, Aaron was basically on the verge of basically uh, <laughs> breaking. Uh, Rhino's head off, basically, and so you got the other guy, uh, and he, basic the other Titan, basically the Colossal Titan, basically falls literally on top of them both, and there's all the steam and debris and stuff that's going everywhere. All the soldiers are getting caught into it and stuff like that. And then out of nowhere, it's like... <sighs> Aaron is on the ground. His Titan form's on the ground. And you see Rhino, he's just biting in on him and stuff like that. And next thing you know, Aaron is in his human form, knocked out, and is being taken away by uh, Bertel. And... Um, Bertel and Rhino, uh, well, Rhino, you know, he goes on Rhino, and Rhino's just running, running in the Titan form and stuff like that, and so that's how that ends. It's kind of weird, uh, kind of weird, uh, like uh, way of doing that. Uh, then I believe next they showed a scene with Commander Pixis uh, and uh, Ervin, and uh, well. Bander Pixis was, um, he, uh, was, like, drunk, I guess, and he was asleep, and the person had to, like, you know, wake him up and stuff like that. And, uh, so, eventually, uh, after they talk and said, you know, you gotta do this, and he's like, what's the situation, and then... Commander Ervin comes in and talks to him and stuff like that. Um, then you go into the... Uh, I believe they had shown briefly of, like, everyone that was, like... Uh, they showed the map because that was what Pix Commander Pixis was um, explaining was... Uh, the map thing, the you know, the, the you know about Wall Rose and stuff like that. And uh, so it was kind of weird. And um, then they, uh, I believe, the next scene was them basically, uh, you know. They're, like, in the town now, and, uh, you know, they're basically, uh, being, you know, uh, you see Sasha and someone else, you know, coming there, they're getting water, and, you know, they're basically telling them the situation about the Titans, you know, that there was three, and they explain the situation, you know, because I guess they think Amir's still an enemy, I guess, um... So they're trying to explain this to them, and so now they have to devise a plan. <sighs> uh, for the most part, they showed a lot of flashbacks in this episode. Um, but um, there was a thing with uh, Levi, I believe, during the town, where there was... Um, they had some... Uh, they had some, I guess some cops or something, I guess, because they're not, like, scout soldiers, and they said, why did you, you know, not give us any, you know, to do, and stuff like that, you know, Titans to kill, and he's like, I'm sorry, you know, why don't you go on, you, you can go on the front lines with us, and stuff like that, if there's any more good action for you, and then they kind of backed out out of it, and they were like, oh, we gotta do this, so, you know, it's part of our job, so, there was that whole thing, not really much for Levi, but, um, they did that, um, for him. They show a flashback of, like, an incident when, uh, Aaron 
Mikasa and Armin were uh, were kids, and it was an incident, I guess, where Aaron base or Armin bread was stolen by a bunch of you know bullies, basically kid bullies. And so then Aaron was going to fight him, and then so Armin decided to get Mikasa, and Mikasa basically goes up to there, you know, while they're, you know, Aaron's still confronting him, then they eventually start fighting, and uh, then Mikasa comes in when it looks, you know, kind of bleak. Um, meanwhile, the store clerk that's right there, you know, he wants the soldiers to, like, kind of break it up, and, of course, they are drunk, and they don't want to do their job. So, uh, they just kind of let them, you know, duke it out. So, eventually, this pisses off the clerk, and the clerk eventually uh, punches the one guy who says, it is kind of your fault. He just, like, punches him instead, because he's kind of involved, too, because he's not doing anything. So, takes him out. And, um, or he doesn't take him out, but, you know, he, he, you know, gives him a good punch, and so then they start fighting, and then, you know, you know, you know, Aaron, he's still fighting, Mikasa's still fighting, they're still fighting the bullies, um, at this point, eventually a soldier comes in, you know, to break it up for good this time, uh, Aaron and a bunch of the other people get away. Mikasa does it, and Mikasa's like, Aaron, you know, because she really loves him. And, uh, you know, that flashback apparently was a dream for Mikasa because then she wakes up. She gets up, like, all, like, hysterical, and she freaking asks Armin, where is Aaron? And Aaron was taken away, but it was five hours. So five hours had passed since Aaron had been abducted. So they, he, she asked, like, did anybody go for him or go, you know, go to get him? And they, she, you know, he said basically no. Um, you know, they have to regroup. Everyone's knocked out, you know, because Mikasa had a concussion, or that's what at least they said earlier before she got up. Uh, everyone's knocked out, including the commander there. So you know. Everyone's knocked out, so they gotta wait. They said, you know, don't worry, they're gonna have to wait until a day, uh, day, uh, you know, time's over, I guess, or whatever. Um, so, uh, everyone's going in, you know, uh, the drunk guy from the flashback, you know, who's known him for a while now. Uh, you know, says you all have to stick together, and like, you know, you've been in tougher jams before, Say, you know, different situations, same scenario basically there, and tries to explain that to them, you know, eventually gives them food, you know, it's nothing much, but he gives them food, and they eventually devise the plan there, um... that was going on eventually Air commander Ervin shows up and uh you know he's ready to go you know and then he stopped by the commander Hanji and um you know he's, she basically grabs her la his leg and says give me a map also i forgot to mention that you know but while Mikasa and Armin were talking there was a you know shipping moment for uh, Mikasa and Aaron where Mikasa basically says that she wants to be near Aaron you know always so there we go again Mikasa and Aaron confirmed <laughs> uh, so to speak I guess um, <laughs> I hope it is because I, I do like the ship um Anyways, so, um, she draws up the map for Arvin, you know, and what they need to do, or Commander Hanji, um, to, to do what they need to do there, and devise the plan, um, 
after that, you know, the people that are, you know, back and about like Mikasa and everyone else, they're all ready to go, um, you know, to, uh, to get, uh, Aaron back and Amir, I guess, to a certain extent. Um, <laughs> then we see Aaron and Amir, you know, or Amir's already up, uh, Aaron is like, you know, tied up in his scout, his little green, you know, scout thing. They tied him up with it when he gets up, um, and he just stares at them, both the, you know, the spies, basically, the traitors, as Aaron worded it, um, nothing really to say about it, that's just all that happened, basically. Uh, so we'll see more about that in the next episode. Um, so, uh, that's, uh, mostly what happened in, uh, this episode. But, um, I also forgot, you know, as I always mention the Funimation now, uh, unlike the Tsunami broadcast, which I watch, of course, the Tsunami broadcast, but I also then end up watching the Funimation now one when it comes up the next day. Um... They also had, you know, the public disclaimer thing, which technically is during a commercial break, but obviously since the Funimation now doesn't have commercial breaks and it doesn't air on the Toonami broadcast, uh, it's just basically in between the episodes. Um, so the public, they're the information available for public disclaimer shin or disclaimer as it's called, I guess. I don't understand the concept, but I guess, yeah. Um, so, uh, feel wrenchens, uh, this is the English translation from the Japanese translation, I guess, an extreme nutrition ration unique by the scout regiment, high coloristic crackers, and camel food are stapled wrenches which can quickly provide soldiers with the necessary energy for the operation without the need for a fire. The flavor has been refer refined so that the taste isn't bad. I guess they're referencing the stuff because this happens during a commercial break. This is what happens before Mikasa and Aaron eat that, you know, block thing that the drunk dude gave them. Um... Uh, I guess they're referencing that. I'm assuming that's what they're referencing. Yeah, you know, it's not the best food. It doesn't taste bad, but at the same time, it doesn't taste good. But I guess it gives them energy, uh, apparently, or at least that's what I'm kind of... At least that's what I'm seeing from that. Um, Commander Hanji, again, with the map thing... Um, as I explained earlier, she kind of theorizes that, you know, that they, there's no way they could have had their footprints moved out or whatever, and so she's devising that plan to how to find where the, where Aaron was taken, basically, based on the info, um, I, like I said, I don't understand the concept of why Aaron was able to get captured. They didn't really show it. I guess the steam knocked him out, apparently, but I mean, still, I mean, uh, it kind of doesn't make sense, because, you know, wasn't the dude on the verge of getting his head busted off? <laughs> like, shouldn't he be, like, mortally wounded? Um, <laughs> but, uh, I guess that's how they played it. Um, but yeah, um, kind of disagree with that one, but I mean, that's just me there. Uh, I guess they gotta make it, because they also, you know, explained Annie-type things there. Um, uh, they did show, I forgot to mention, they also showed Historia, you know, talking to Ar Armin, too. Um, you know, Armin said she'd rather her stay. That obviously didn't happen. Historica was going to try to help Amir. Um, 
so much for that uh, Rhino theory anyways. Yeah, Rhino's a villain at this point, so, I mean, like, let's get out of here with that shit. Um, so, um, like I said, that brief shown of Aaron and Amir, so I guess that does confirm that Amir is regenerating, uh, and that she is alive still and fine. So I guess that's good for her. Uh, same with Aaron, who's still alive too. Um, but uh, it's an interesting episode. Um, this is going to build up for the other fight that's about to happen, but that's going to be between basically the soldiers, I guess, uh, are going to be going after uh, Rhino and, uh, you know, him, the Colossal Titan, which Colossal Titan is what started everything. So they're definitely going to be taking them out uh, at this point. Um, I still don't know why... The, I don't understand the obsession. I, I guess I don't understand the obsession with Aaron and now Amir, because Amir... Well, I mean, they're after Amir now because they know she's a Titan. That's why they went after her, because they knew she was a Titan. But my whole thing is... Because she's the same Titan like Aaron. My whole thing is, though, I still don't know, like, because... They showed a flashback, I guess, of a mirror or a Titan, but they thought it was a mirror. They 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 thought that that person ate their friend, and then of course we find out they're the villains. So I mean, I mean, like I don't even understand this anymore. Like I don't know what's going on. Um, it's getting really good though, but I just don't know what's going on with this. Like, like they got this whole like. I don't even know anymore, dude. Like I don't like I said, I still support the fact that my theory a couple weeks ago, I think I, I said it, was that these guys like are like a different race of Titans because they got the armor and shit. Where uh Aaron and Amir are Titans of like a different group of Titans and they don't like each other, I guess. And maybe, well, obviously Aaron doesn't know anything about anything because he never was a Titan until Season 1. Um, Amir obviously has more familiarity of her Titan abilities, so she must have known her Titan abilities right away. So I think we're going to be finding out more about Aaron's Titan capabilities because Amir obviously knows more about being a titan because she's known about being a titan for years just never revealed it to anybody where Aaron, on the other hand never knew he was a titan and never and never even was able to be a titan until season one of the actual plot so there is something to be said here um on what's on what's going on i i do believe you know possibly in the next episode or the episodes to come we're going to find more about uh Aaron's Titan form and what what's the difference between his form and Annie's form and Rhino's form what 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 is the difference from their Titans to you know their human Titan forms to uh Amir and Aaron's Titan forms cuz I think they are different altogether cuz they don't have the armaments but they can transform in humans like the armor Titans can so that's going to be the thing to uh really find out in this or look out for in the next uh, episode that will be coming up on a Toonami. Um, like I said, these episodes air; they premiere on Toonami. If there is a holiday marathon on Toonami, which is coming up in two weeks, just so you know, uh, Funimation Now does not air in the, they do not air the English dub on Funimation Now unless it is premiered the day before on the Toonami TV broadcast. So if you do not see it on the Funimation Now. It's, you know, if you're some person that's out of date and doesn't have cable like you should, um, you know, well, I, I guess I guess you don't have to have cable. Let me rephrase that. I guess you don't have to have cable. But if you don't have cable and you're not aware of this, then you really should check out the Toonami website because if the, the contract works, the Attack on Titan contract works is Toonami has the... TV premiere rights, 
which means they have to air it before it appears on any stream service. And that is including Funimation now. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's because, you know, Funimation dubbed it. They, they should be allowed to premiere it. That's not how the contract works, guys. I was debating someone on Twitter about this. They don't understand how the con contracts work, okay? Um, streams do, just because it's the Funimation stream does, and because they dub it does not mean that they have the rights to broadcast it first. The contract, Toonami gets the TV broadcast, premiere first, and then the Funimation now gets it the next day. If Toonami doesn't have it, if Toonami doesn't have that, or doesn't air it that weekend, then you will not get it the next day. But if they do air it, the Funimation now will get it the next day at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so, yeah, um, for the, all the people that are going to get confused in two weeks um, about this. Uh, because I know people were complaining about that when the Samurai Jack Marathon was going on. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think, though, about this week's episode 33 uh, English dub review of Attack on Titans. Um, and let me know what you guys think, uh, what's coming up. You know, um, we're following the English dub, obviously, keep in mind. Um, so, uh, let me know what you guys think is coming up. And what I would like to know what your theory is on what the whole Titan concept is as well. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Comment, rate, subscribe if you like this video or my other videos, please subscribe. And that's about it. I am the SS Ultimate Goku. I'm out of here. Peace.